The wealth of biodiversity around the world has been recognized for centuries, for knowledge, research, and commerce. Technology and the demand for natural products have increased the value of biodiversity, which is now the basis for many innovative ingredients and inputs. Biodiversity also has an intrinsic value. It performs essential ecological services. It is a part of the natural patrimony of nations and is deeply linked to the cultural identity of many communities. The Convention on Biological Diversity aims to reconcile the importance of biodiversity as the basis for new products with the rights of the countries and populations that have historically safeguarded it. In particular, it has set up a system regulating access to biodiversity and ensuring the equitable sharing of its benefits. This system is commonly referred to as ABS. ABS tries to ensure that access to biodiversity takes place with the approval of relevant countries and communities, who should also get their fair share of all monetary and non-monetary rewards. This is not just a matter of equity. It is also essential to harmonizing the conservation of biodiversity with sustainable development. But putting in practice access and benefit sharing is challenging. There are no easy answers. What resources and activities are covered by ABS? Who needs permission to do what and from whom? How can ABS obligations be balanced with needs and difficulties on the ground? How does ABS apply along a supply chain? Adequate responses will largely need to be arrived at on a case-by-case -case basis, but additional guidance may be forthcoming. 2010 will bring a set of new international rules on ABS, and growing public awareness and scrutiny on sourcing practices is bringing about the development of new tools and approaches to ABS. These rules and approaches will likely not eliminate all uncertainties, but they will all add to the need for companies to take note and take action on ABS policies and practices.